Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a Dirac Live calibrator. And welcome to the second video in a series of videos where I unveil my new reference, no compromise to a point, very real world Dolby Atmos review home cinema system, which I am really, really happy with, really, really proud of. You know, this is a big passion of mine, something that I've been working on. Well, think, thinking about doing this upgrade for at least a year, but you know, a system that I've been working on for absolutely years. And it's got me to a point where really very happy with the system, the components, the sound quality that I'm getting from this system and the image quality at the moment as well. I'll talk to you about that in a future video. Now, I promise you in this video, I'll speak to you about the speakers, why I've installed them where they are, how I've installed them, you know, how have I installed Kef LS50 for Dolby Atmos. I think that's a really interesting one. Some of you might fancy taking this project on yourself because <laughs> it works, it really works. Let me just tell you a bit about this view that you're seeing. If you're a regular to the channel, you won't have seen this before. You certainly won't have seen that red over there. Look at that, it's really, really striking. So let me just give you a quick breakdown of what you're looking at. In front of me, we have the Arcam AVR850, and that sits on top of the Quadraspire Q4 Evo AV rack, which I spoke about in the last video. And if you haven't watched the first part of this series, definitely go and watch that video first. There's actually a full playlist uh, for this project. There's lots of really good videos in it already with more coming. So go and check that playlist out if you haven't seen it. On top of the Arcam, look at that. That's a really interesting book by a big audiophile and a big YouTuber. Some of you might recognize it. And if you're interested to know whether it's any good or not, I'll let you know in a few weeks once I've finished it. Behind me, we have some acoustic products. We have some diffusion there. That's GIK Acoustics Q7D diffusion. That striking red thing there, that's a GIK Acoustics Monster bass trap. There's monster bass traps below it. There's GIK Acoustics soffit traps here in the corner. And I don't think I've explained it actually, in case you haven't guessed it, this is the rear of the listening room. Sorry, I should have said that right at the start. So essentially the speakers that you're seeing are surround speakers, height speakers, and surround speakers. And up here is a really very interesting 4K projector. That's a BenQ W57000 or 5700, um, which is a really, 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 interesting projector at its price point. Uh, I've literally just added that to the system just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I'll be reviewing that and telling you a bit about that little gem very, very soon. I want to concentrate on the surround speakers and the Atmos speakers, the Kef LS50s, which you can see kind of in the corners of the shot. So you are seeing the, the kind of one side of this listening room, really. So we've got Atmos speakers, and then we've got surround speakers and some of you are probably already seeing you know things that are good things that are bad mistakes but I'm going to tell you about why everything is where it is and how I've achieved this finish so just a quick reminder why I chose the Kef LS50s in the first place I personally own Kef reference speakers the reference 3 and the reference 2C they are my own personal speakers I like those speakers for lots of reasons I like them because they're fantastic with music and they're also fantastic with home cinema a big part of choosing the Kef LS50s was to continue that into the home cinema system but there was other reasons why I chose them I wanted a small speaker that could be put up on the wall so that you know I didn't have speakers around the back here because this, this is a traffic area. People come through this room. There is doors here behind me, behind this curtain is doors. And what you can't see over there is more doors. So it is a traffic area, people come through. So I needed speakers that would be up off the floor so they wouldn't get bumped into, scratched, damaged, or worse. I wanted a speaker that was black, preferably, to be in this back cave. I wanted it to be no compromise. I wanted it to be monitor in style, which works perfectly with new immersive surround sound formats, such as your DTSX and your Dolby Atmos. I wanted the speakers that would work well in pairs, and I wanted eight speakers exactly the same, so that when they do have to work in pairs, or for or when they're creating phantom images, filling in the gaps between the speakers, that they're gonna do that as seamlessly as possible. Really, the LS50 is designed to be either a monitor speaker or a hi-fi speaker. I don't really see any difference between you know a hi-fi speaker and a cinema speaker. What is the difference? There isn't any. I think the, the traits of the LS50 work really, really well for home cinema. So as I mentioned, one of the main things for me 
with being able to have this many speakers in this small space was getting the speakers up off the floor and putting them up on the wall and obviously up on the ceiling for Dolby Atmos. So how did I achieve this? Well, the starters I bought quite simply, speaker wall brackets. Now there's all different ones that you can buy. I searched on Amazon and I just took a liking to a certain pair. They are the BT77 Ultra Grip Pro. It's really a simple design and very easy to install. You have a back plate which you screw into the wall. The fixtures that came with it are really high quality and they're what I'm using at the moment. You have a plastic cover which goes over the top to, to improve how they look and then you have a separate section which bolts together and that is what you place the speaker on. Now there's several reasons why I liked these wall brackets. Firstly, they have some angle and some tilt adjustment. Not quite enough for me but just about enough for me to get by with the speakers at this height. They have an angle adjustment, which is really, really important for me. So what I've been able to do is get that twist and that angle to be symmetrical for both speakers. And I think by doing that, it's counteracted the fact that they are slightly offset. The way this bracket system works, it works on a clamp system. Now, there's a screw here and a screw here, which you undo and you open up the clamp. Put your speaker down in the middle, you tighten up your screws, the clamp tightens and holds the speaker tightly shut. So what do I think about these wall brackets? I think they cost about 30 pounds for a pair. So it's 15 pounds each. And they are absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. You know, go up on the wall, they're rock solid. On the inside of the clamp mechanism, they come with just a little piece of, kind of like foamy rubber, which you put on the inside. So as the clamp tightens up on the speaker, it doesn't damage the speaker. So you, you're able to tighten the clamp up really quite tight on the speaker without risk of damaging them. And again, these wall brackets are really, really affordable. And obviously I'll put a link below the video description. It's not an optical illusion. You can see that this speaker is much higher than this speaker. Now, this speaker here is in a, is it, for me at least, is in like the perfect position for this room so that it clears the uh, cinema chairs. This is too high. Unfortunately, I don't really have much choice but to have the side surround speakers up higher. As I mentioned, this is a walkway area, a traffic area. I needed the speakers to be high enough so that the average person coming in here wouldn't hit their head on them or bump into them. And having the surround speakers up high like this is really, I think, about the only compromise that I've had to make in my no compromise system. So far, the results I've been getting from a surround sound point of view using the Kefal S50s has been absolutely fantastic. And I'm really, really happy with the choice of the speakers. And when you look at the speakers, how far apart they are in relation to each other, and I think the LS50 is about the right size for this room and for the distances and for the duties that they're doing. So I think I made a really good choice with the LS50, it's a really good choice. LS50s as Dolby Atmos ceiling speakers. Really, really interesting one. And I think I was quite brave to take on the project. And there's lots of reasons why I was worried about it. For me, it was like stepping into you know, uncharted territory. I just had to go with it, take a risk, do my best and see what the results were. Now the both rear Dolby Atmos speakers are installed like this. The front Dolby Atmos speakers are installed really quite differently. I thought, right, I want to care this 50s on the ceiling. I need to find a really high quality ceiling bracket. And you would expect there to be loads of speaker ceiling brackets for sale. Of course you would, wouldn't you? And when I went searching for them, I couldn't find hardly any or none that looked quality enough or none that could hold a speaker of this rating. Now I managed to find one, just one, by a German company, I think it's Koenig and Muller or something like that is the name of the company. Now I bought them via Amazon and there'll be a link below the video in the description if you were interested to find out more details. And Koenig and Muller or Miller, whatever the company is, are a manufacturer of lots of high quality professional audio accessories, things like mic stands, a musical instrument stands, speaker brackets, all different types of speaker wall brackets, but for speaker ceiling brackets, they only manufacture one. And that is the one that I'm using in here. The reason I chose to use it is because it's rated to a maximum of 10 kilograms as a speaker weight. And the Kef LS50s weigh seven kilograms, so I thought, great, we're safe. We're only using a speaker that's about three quarters of their rated weight. That's absolutely perfect. But looking at the picture of the speaker brackets and going on the Koenig and Muller website didn't actually explain 
how you install the speakers. I couldn't find any sort of detailed manual. And even if there was a detailed manual, I'm a man, I'm an audiophile, and I probably wouldn't have read it anyway. So I, I remember looking at the picture on Amazon, looking at that picture thinking, right, I know how this speaker bracket's gonna work. You're gonna screw it into the ceiling, you're gonna screw it into the speaker, you're gonna angle the speaker where you want it, you're gonna tighten that big nut, and that's gonna hold the speaker just perfect. Great, really, really easy. So when I got the brackets here and I'm looking at them and I'm looking at the LS50, for starters, the brackets were different. They're a new design uh, and Koenig and Miller have changed the design. So that big kind of nut is no longer there. Instead, you've got two tiny little Allen key nuts that you screw instead. So quickly to explain how the ceiling speaker bracket works. It's one unit that comes apart into two units. One part you screw into your ceiling. That's really, really easy. Obviously, it's important to find you know, a ceiling joist, uh, bought a Bosch joist detector from Amazon. I bought a really high quality one because I've tried cheaper ones and they just do not work as good. I bought the Bosch joist detector. Again, that'll be linked in the video description. And you obviously run it along the ceiling and you find where your joists are. That's really, really important. So you've got a really secure anchor and fixing point to hang the speaker from. Anybody that's installed anything on the ceiling, projector screens, etc., will know exactly what I'm talking about. So once you've screwed your half of your bracket to the ceiling, now the crunch time was next. Screwing the speaker half of the bracket to the speaker. This had to be just right. And there's things to worry about. Where is the speaker bracket gonna go on the speaker? Does it go on the side? Does it go on the top? Does it go on the back? Does it go on the bottom? <laughs> all those things have a really really big impact and the second thing is what screws do you use to screw the speaker bracket to the speaker you don't want two small ones you don't want two thin ones you certainly don't want two long ones that are going to go through the speaker carcass the, the chassis the mdf chassis go through and hit and damage any internal parts like the crossover that is the thing i was most worried about screwing too far through the, the cabinet and hitting a crossover damaging it not finding out that the speaker doesn't work until long after it's been installed. These were all things that were keeping me up at night, really worrying me. I decided I would go with a thick, short screw and I would make the connection as secure as possible because essentially all the weight of this speaker is being hung on just four screws. So I bought five millimeter thick, 30 millimeter length wood screws, really high quality wood screws. I used a washer with them as well, an M5 washer, just to shorten that screw just a little bit and just to make sure this, this screw would tighten up real tight and to lock and secure the connection even more, I used the strongest glue that I know exists. I used Araldite, which is a two-part epoxy glue, which means you mix equal amounts of the two different parts of the glue. You give it a good stir, coat the screws, screw them in, and then they are never, ever, ever gonna come out. I think you'd need the Hulk to pull apart an Araldite connection. It is insanely strong glue. So if you're gonna use Araldite, make sure you wear gloves because you do not wanna get that stuff on your hands, your fingers, or, or anywhere. It is that crazy strong. Right, so back to making a decision of where I was gonna screw the speaker bracket. This is a really, really big thing. This is an example of screwing the brackets correctly. I wanted the Kef LS50 to be on their side for Atmos duties, so they would drop down into the room as least as possible. I turned the LS50 on its side, moved the bracket to the middle, which is naturally obviously where you would think to put it, but just ever so slightly back, so that the weight from the LS50 just wants to lean itself forward just that little bit. Because the way the ceiling bracket works, you have two halves, as I said, the ceiling half and the speaker half. You push the two together, and then you have two locking nuts that are done on an Allen key. You lock that to tighten both, and that secure connection just keeps those two parts together. That's all that connection does. This then hangs via the bracket. The bracket has an internal ball joint, and you then that's what allows you to move the speaker left and right, up and down. And all the weight kind of is falling straight down from the bracket. That means it's the, really the weight of the LS50 is distributed evenly across the ball joint. That is how you want to do this. That's, that's the perfect way to do it. So the brackets hold, the brackets perfect. And if you install the LS50 like that, 
then you'll have perfect results. Now it took me one or really two speakers to work that out. The first two speakers that I installed, I screwed the bracket to the back or the rear of the LS50, just above where the speaker cable terminals are. Now the problem with mounting them like that is then all the weight and all the leverage is on the front of the speaker and that is too much weight and too much leverage for the ball joint that's in these speaker brackets to hold. So what will happen is you'll pull the speaker up to where you want it and it just falls back down again. Back up to where you want it, it falls back down again. So I made that mistake for the first speaker. Because I made it for one, I thought well, I better do the same thing for two uh, to keep everything as symmetrical as I could. Now I worked around it with a bit of a Frankenstein fix that required me to screw kind of a massive great big anchor point on the front of the speaker and then kind of secure that to the ceiling by itself to get the speaker up to the angle of where I wanted it. But that means that speaker is now fixed. I cannot move it left, I cannot move it right, I cannot adjust the angle. Fortunately, or not fortunately, hours and hours and hours of messing around with it allowed me to get the front height speakers in a place where I'm happy with them and they are symmetrical and they are where I needed them to be. But trust me, that was not easy. <laughs> that took hours and hours and hours of just messing around with different ways and different screwing different things here and there into the ceiling to, to provide kind of two whole anchor points, which is just which is just terrible. And I'd get away with it in here because the room's pitch black, but it's not something you'd want in, in a living room or a light room where you can see the kind of the Frankenstein fix. So that is how I achieved it. That is how I've got well, well, you can see half of it here, the other half is exactly the same. So that is how I've got KF LS 50s for surround and Dolby Atmos ceiling speakers. It was a lot of work, hell of a lot of work, um, but the end results are really, really, really worth the effort and the money. I couldn't be happier with the KF LS 50s doing this, doing these duties. I really think I chose the right speaker and I've got there in the end in terms of it's delivering the solution that I envisioned in my mind. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that's given you another insight into my reference review system for home cinema. So what's coming next? I've got more things that I need to unveil and talk to you about. Room acoustics, a little bit what you can see here and what you can see there. I've got some really interesting fiber optic based HDMI cables, which I'm gonna give you a video about specifically because they're really, really interesting for a couple of reasons, but one really big one. I wanna create some demonstration videos where I've got a few ideas of how I'm gonna try and demonstrate how this system sounds. I hope you're enjoying this little mini series. I hope it's inspiring you to take on something like this or something bigger, grander, and even better. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. We really appreciate the support for you doing that. Make sure you've subscribed to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell and you'll win a special prize. Make sure to go and visit the website if you haven't recently or if you haven't yet. There's always updates, hot news, etc. going on there. And yeah, make sure you come back for the part three installment for this mini series and all the other videos that are coming soon. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you soon. Take care.